Good morning, everyone. My name is Amy McLaughlin. I'm the point of contact for the school health profiles this year for the Healthy Schools Act. And uh, thank you for joining us for the webinar to learn more about the data collection process for the profiles this year. Today's webinar will last about half an hour. If you have any questions, post them to the question board within GoToWebinar, and I'll answer them at the end of the webinar. And let's do a sound check first, and uh, can one or two folks just confirm that you can hear me by typing in um, into the question field? Just affirmative. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll get started. Today we're going to talk about generally um, some background information about the School Health Profile, important information that you need to know regarding the um, submission of your profile, go over the content within the profile, some key questions and instructions on completing a few of those questions, next steps and resources that can help you complete the profile, and then we'll have time at the end for Q&A. The School Health Profile was established as a requirement within the Healthy Schools Act of 2010 to ensure that schools are in compliance with the Act. And OSSI collects information regarding schools, health and PE, um, health services, nutrition, and environment. And we collect that annually. And we use the profiles to report up to the city council, to the mayor, to the Healthy Schools, um, Healthy Youth and Schools Commission every year regarding compliance with the Act. The profiles also provide OSSI with some data that can allow us to evaluate trends across things like health and PE curricula, for example, which allows us to better provide guidance to schools and determine how we can be a better educational partner for schools. The important information for you um, to know up front is the timeline, of course. January 13th, which is this Friday, the profiles will open in a quick base application, and it'll stay open through February 15th, and 5 p.m. that day is the deadline. Um, I've put here, and I'll put several other places through this webinar, and um, I think you've seen an email to our help desk, our support. Um, so that's our call center, and those are questions that relate, you can ask those questions that relate specifically to completing the profile in quick base, if you need to give access to more people within your team, uh, or just have any issues with the system generally. Those are two, um, uh, an email and a phone number to call, and they're open between 8 and 5.30. And the emails that you've been receiving from Aussie School Health at dc.gov is also a good resource for maybe higher level questions about um, deadlines or, or questions about um, the profile more generally. Regardless, you can ask any questions to this and they'll get passed on to the right folks. One more note, actually, before I move forward, is that um, this Friday, the points of contact from our 2015-2016 school health profile collection, as well as principals and heads of school um, from our current list, will receive an email directly from QuickBase. So it'll indicate that they've been added as users for the 2017 data collection. So if you're not contacted by us or by QuickBase, that is this Friday by 4 p.m., then, um, or if yeah, so if, if folks who need to access this aren't on our list and didn't get that email, you can contact this help desk um, number or email here and have that um, request come from a principal or a head of school. So jumping into the profile itself, the profile is divided into seven sections and it's an online form and it has to be completed by each school. So for example, if your LEA, your local education agency, includes five campuses, each campus must complete the profile. And we recommend that at least, or that one person at each school be responsible for disseminating the form itself or disseminating you know, the, the questions that they need from other folks on staff. So that could be a health teacher, a nurse, a food services director, uh, and then that person can be in charge of collecting all of the data and the information and submitting the form online. Um, so the seven sections are listed here and within the PDF profile, which I've attached to this webinar as well, if you're listening now, you can find it there. Within that PDF, in each section, we recommend a point of contact who should 
who you know, we're guessing would be a good person to be in charge of collecting that information or, or, or giving it to the main point of contact. So those sections are general information about the school, questions about health services, section three is health education, four is physical education, school nutrition, and section six is about how you distribute information around all of those things. Section seven is about environment. So next I'll log on to the QuickBase system and show you how to um, log in, how to locate your profile, how to edit it, and submit the profile, and then where you can find assistance, again, if needed, um, FAQs and things as well. So I'm going to jump over to QuickBase application. So when you go to QuickBase, this is what your login will look like. Username here, password here, and sign in. The screen that you see when you sign in may look a little bit different from mine. Uh, I have multiple things happening here. You might have one, you might have a few, depending on what your role has been so far in QuickBase and what you have access to. You'll see here the 2016-2017 OSSI HSA School Health Profiles. Again, based on your LEA, you'll see um, what you'll see will be just a little bit different in this area here, survey completion status. So let's say you have five schools. This pie chart here would have five pieces of pie in it. And then you can be able to see when you log in, school A needs to complete pages two and three. School B is all complete, etc. So when you log in here, there's a couple of options for you on the left here. Start the survey, print out the PDF form of the survey, look at our FAQs, and read more about the profiles themselves. Those are always here for you on this home page. So to start the survey, we'll click the top button. Again, what I see might be a little bit different from what you're going to see. You'll see a list of schools that you have access to here. I'm going to scroll down and find a test school for us to look at, or a test LEA. Notice that I clicked the pencil icon. Um, there were options of the pencil icon or the little eye icon. Um, that's edit and view. So I clicked edit. And you'll see this reminder here, um, and we added this reminder this year because I think in the past um, schools might have misunderstood the question eight, which is asking to select grades served. Um, so make sure you select each of the grades that your school serves there. This is just a reminder for that. So you'll notice that the profile is divided into three pages. Right here you see you're on page one of three. When you complete all of the questions, after you've completed all of the questions, and you end up at the bottom here, it's important to remember to click this box, completed page one. Then before you go straight to page two, make sure you click save and save all the data that you've entered into this page. Once you do, hit completed page one and then up top to the save button, which I won't do right now because I haven't completed all of these questions, but when that happens, your page will Refresh, and you'll land back on this page. So to go to page two, you find your school again here, and go to page two. And the profile is complete when all three pages are complete. When all three pages, the information has been filled out, the checkbox has been selected, and you click save for each page. Uh, another thing to remember is when you come to page two, if you notice I scrolled all the way down to the bottom there um, and didn't see the checkbox, and also I'm unable to make any changes here, right? I can't click anywhere. The reason for that is because I did not click the edit button up top. And so I think that's a common question we got a lot last year. It's an easy button to miss. So make sure that when you're moving on to page two and page three of your profile, you remember 
Right now you're technically only in view mode, so click edit. And that will provide access to all the fields. So now I can select. Uh, another thing to remember is that there are some um, skip patterns that we've built into the system. So for example, if your school is an elementary school and your grades K through 5, um, you would not be asked question 23, which is just for high school. It's a question about high school PE minutes. So you, your questionnaire would skip from question uh, 22 to 24 because you'd missed 23. So don't be alarmed if you, uh, if you notice that the questions in the questionnaire don't go in order or skip a few. That's by design. Uh, and the last thing to note, uh, just more generally, about the profile and submitting it online is that if you skip a required question, then you won't be able to save the page, kind of like what you're used to with other forms. You can't save the page until all required questions have been completed, and those are denoted here by the red asterisk. Couple of questions. I'm going to go back to our presentation. A few questions of note here regarding health and PE minutes. Question 18, if you are an elementary or middle school, K through 8. Uh, question 18 will ask about average minutes per week of health education, and then 22 will ask about physical education. Um, when you're answering the one about health education, think about it in context of the entire year, and we're looking for average minutes per week. To separate out the health education minutes, if health ed is taught as part of PE, think about that those as two separate things and give us your best estimate um, and your best average for what that looks like throughout the year. So for example, if your PE class lasts for an hour and typically about half of that class is dedicated to health education, sometimes it varies and it's 15, sometimes it varies and it's 45. If on average, to your best estimate, it's about 30 minutes, even though it's part of PE class, give us 30 minutes for health education, and then for question 22, it would be 30 for PE. For question 22, think about that again in the context of the entire year, and do not include things like recess or before or after school activities. And question 22A um, is asking for physical activity during PE class only. And so again, uh, think about that in context of the entire year and only activity that happens during the PE course, so not recess and not before or after school clubs or sports. Okay. So the last um, note here about specific questions, this applies to high schools, grades 9 through 12. Question 23 will ask you about average PE minutes within the PE core. Uh, for that one, uh, that's again the same, same rule applies there. Think about it in the context of the year and think about your average physical activities within the course and don't think about after school or before school activities. So that's it for those. Um, a note here. Answer honestly and answer as accurately as you can. The last note about the profile itself, when you're done, I'm going to flip back to the profile momentarily. When you're back at the main page that shows your schools laid out here, You'll notice these green dots or green blocks here. And that means that test LEA, for example, here that I'm pointing to has completed page one, page two, and page three. Uh, this school here, test charter school 1114, has completed just page one. So this is a nice visual, um, like high level visual overview of where your schools are and how many pages they've, they've completed. Um, so that's a nice reference for you to come back to and a reminder of what you're, what's done and what's left to be done. And 
again, this is what I just walked through, but um, this, this, can, this presentation can be a resource for you um, after the webinar as well. So this is just a rundown um, of the information I've already given you. So this is where you log into QuickBay. Um, Friday, this Friday the 13th is when it opens, and we'll give access to principals, heads of school, and our contacts from last year. There's also a question in the profile this year, kind of like last year, where we ask who you, if there are any additional points of contact you would want for this profile next year. And again, this is who you can contact for access if you need help with that, and copy your principal or head of school in the email. Some next steps, you can download the principal form. It's on our school uh, 2017 School Health Profiles page, and I've also attached it to this webinar. I can send it out after the webinar, too. So the printable form, the PDF, is there. Uh, the QuickBase application opens up Friday. And this webinar recording will be posted on that page as well. Uh, after you submit your profile, 30 days uh, will be the turnaround, and you'll receive a PDF of your responses. And according to the Healthy Schools Act of 2010, it's required that you have that, um, that profile, that PDF that we send you, available um, in your main office or on your website. There are, there's a set of instructions and a step-by-step -step technical guide on our website as well, and I can follow up and make sure you have access to those. And there's FAQ on the website as well as on the QuickBase application itself in that green navigation area. And that takes us to the end of what I wanted to share with you, and we'll take a look at some questions next. Feel free to submit them now if you haven't. first question is uh, that this person recalls there was a CDC survey in years past. And the answer to that, um, why that's, you're not seeing that now, is yes, it's, it happens every other year. So the CDC school health profile is not required this year. Um, every year it's required that we submit the school health profile for the Healthy Schools Act um, and not for CDC. So that's why you're not seeing that this year. All right, so next question, the FAQs that you have access to, will those include the key questions? And yes, that will include the, the key questions that I just went through are mentioned as well in the FAQs. And I'm just checking to make sure we have no more questions. Okay. If there are no more questions, that brings us to the end of the webinar, short and sweet. Um, again, you can contact us at aussie.schoolhealth. Uh, and I'll bring this last page back up. Contact the help desk as well as we get started later this week. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for your hard work. Have a good day.